Hi, I'm Jay Richards with the Discovery Institute, and we are at the COSM 2022 conference in Bellevue, Washington. We had a terrific, engaging panel uh, here at the conference called AI Friend or Foe. And I've talked actually to a couple of the panelists, and now I'm uh, happy to be able to talk to my uh, friend George Montañez, who is a professor at Harvey Mudd in California. Uh, and has a lot of interesting things to say about AI. George, good to see you. It's good to be here. Yeah, so first of all, kind of try, summarize from your perspective the panel and what, what, the, what the areas of agreement and disagreement are. Yeah, so I think broadly speaking, we were all interested in AI, and yep. I think we're all broadly impressed by AI in different ways. Yeah. So definitely, uh, Bob and I, we have a different take. Bob Marks. Bob Marks. Yes. Bob Marks. Uh, have a different take on that than uh, Blake Lemoyne, who yes. was the other panelist. Uh, but there's been tremendous advances in AI in the past few years, and I think mm -hmm. you would be blind to not recognize yeah. that. Um, but that being said, as somebody who works with machine learning systems, who proves things about machine learning systems, there are things that I maybe uh, see in a slightly different perspective, kind of looking behind the scenes, opening the black box, that mm -hmm. don't mystify me in the same ways that it might mystify somebody else who doesn't kind of have that experience yeah. working with them. Yeah, and so Blake, of course, was it was engaging with this new uh, this new Google uh, program, yes. Lambda, right? Which is a layering of several different programs designed to try to pass the Turing test, to, to designed to try to fool people, essentially, yes. right? Yeah. And it seems to, you know, from that limited data, it seems to be doing a good job. But you think, okay, <laughs> that might look like something's happening, but you don't think that's what's happening. Well, it's not that that. <laughs> So things are happening yes, of in course. the sense that these are statistical correlation machines, and they're doing the things that we built them to do. Yeah. Right. So they're taking conditioned on text that's previously been given. Mm -hmm. What is the most likely set of characters that I should say next that right. are going to be coherent with what's said before? And that's a, a tremendous achievement. Right? It, it took us a long time to get to this point. Uh, but that being said, there are definitely tells, even mm -hmm. within the transcript that Blake himself published online, is yeah. Lambda Sentient that shows exactly what's happening and shows a, a lack of understanding on the part of the system. And at, on the one hand, uh, we shouldn't be too surprised that it shows lack of understanding. It's not built necessarily no. for understanding, it's built for correlation. Right. Right. Uh, so there's a, a phrase in there where uh, it was one of the collaborators or Blake asked the system, what brings you pleasure or joy? Mm -hmm. uh, and the system said, I like spending time with friends and family. And so <laughs> if a human were to say that, that's a very natural idiom in English. We say friends and family, we like the alliteration of it. It's yes. probably been said millions of times online. Yeah. So Lambda, and in fact, we almost never even say family and friends. It's almost always do, friends right? and family. It's almost friends and family. Yeah. And so the fact that this system picked up on that and reused it in its response makes total sense yeah. from a correlation perspective. From a sentient AI perspective, that makes very little sense because right. what family has Lambda spent time with? <laughs> yeah, right? it would be some, you'd, if it, it had said something like, well, of course, I don't have a body or friends, right. and it, so it would, it just yeah, qualified it yes, least, exactly. Right? You think, okay, hmm, maybe something's happening yeah. here, and so that's a tell. So, what are, what are the other kinds of tells that I mean? Because the the, the question is, okay, I suspect that the Turing test is actually a fairly low bar, especially yeah. you know if we were to give Google to someone right 50 years ago, it would probably pass the Turing yeah. test for them, or they would. Um, so, how does this? Um, how are we to think of this in an era in which these things will obviously mimic more and more closely what we are accustomed to seeing in agents. Yeah. So I, I think this is a, a problem, mm -hmm. first and foremost, in the sense that um, it, it can be harmless. So my children, they tend to think of virtual agents as beings, right? Mm -hmm. So they'll talk yeah. to Alexa. My four-year-old will talk to Alexa as if Alexa is a person. Yes. I think it's adorable. It's not harmful yet. Yeah. Uh, when people who are much older than four years old mm -hmm. begin to mistake these things for actual persons, that's when it be can become a little bit tricky. Yeah. Um, and so I think part of it is demystifying these systems. Mm -hmm. So my PhD was focused on essentially looking at the black box of machine learning, which right. when I first started out, it looked like magic. I was with everyone else. Why are yeah. these things working the way they are? And really understanding what's going on under the hood. Mm -hmm. And once I did that, I said, oh, this, this makes total sense why we see the sorts of behaviors we see and why they have the catastrophic error modes that yes. we observe. So this is uh, another thing that can become very dangerous. If we mistake these systems, we imp uh, ascribe to them uh, personhood and, and powers they don't have, yeah, absolutely. we're going to be very surprised when they behave in ways that are very different from the ways humans behave. 
Yeah. Uh, can I give you an example? Absolutely, please do. So, so for uh, vision systems, you'll have vision classifiers which will take an object and it'll say with very high confidence a picture of a panda. Mm -hmm. This is a panda. Yeah. It turns out that if you add imperceptible, visually imperceptible noise to that picture, it'll equally uh, confidently say this is a flamingo. Wow. Right. So there's very a mistake a human would never a make. A mistake a human will never make. A mistake my four year old would never no. make. Yeah. And so not knowing that these things are very different than mm -hmm. people yes. can lead us to place misplaced trust and faith in them. I and, mean, which could let us down. I think about Watson, which for many people, you know, who, who won against these two great champions of Jeopardy and was very quick and had yeah. databases. But it, Watson would also make very strange errors that right. humans would make. Right. <laughs> it's like <laughs> just a random sort of thought that had nothing to do with the question. So yeah, yeah you get these kinds of tells. And so, um, but the fact that you know someone uh, fairly sophisticated users, I think, right. can 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 make these kinds of I think mistaken inferences. I think it's it's, it's crucial for us to become very. Sophisticated consumers and users of right. these tools. Informed users. Informed right. users, so yeah. The, the job falls to people like you and I yeah. to explain this to people. Right? Yes. There's not magic going on mm -hmm. with these systems. There's not, uh, to kind of demystify them, there's not anything mystical. These are statistical correlation systems. Yes. And the better that we can communicate that to people, hopefully the better we can avoid some of these uh, this misplaced faith. In these yeah, systems. well, and, that, and the misplaced faith is on one side, but there's also just the fear on the other, right? right I mean, this right. is the whole point of Terminator and Skynet right. is that, well, if these things become sentient at some point, what's going to happen? And so I think, honestly, uh, many times strong AI advocates who are optimists actually scare normal people because right. this isn't really a sort of comforting thought. And so I think it's really important because, I mean, I know you agree that we think there's amazing potential for this, this technology, right. um, but if people don't quite get what's going on, I think it, it, it could lead to, to you know, pandemonium. And I think there's <laughs> misplaced fear in the danger. So where, yeah. where the danger lies, there is a lot of danger in AI systems. Absolutely. And a lot of it has nothing to do with sentience. No. Right? So these yeah. things are dangerous on their own terms. Humans like, are still involved. Humans are still involved, <laughs> and humans are incredibly dangerous. Yes, so absolutely. What humans can do with force multipliers and power tools absolutely. incredibly dangerous. Absolutely. And of course, you use a bunch of really good examples on the panel in which you showed things that might look like they're sort of magical. Actually, they do what they do because they have constant human input yeah. from actual agents. Yeah. And I think that's that's what people forget with Google, right? There's no there's no one back there. This is a system that's collecting the decisions and choices of millions of people who are themselves agents. And so right. our agency um, it sort of is derivative, and so these systems are yeah. derivative of our own agency. They're reflections of us, yeah. for better or for worse. For better or for worse, yeah. that's right. And it, humans create, and humans are fallen, and so we end up with all sorts of things, good, bad, and indifferent. Yeah. Yeah. George, good to see you. Hey, it's good Thanks to talk for joining to you. me. Absolutely. I'm Jay Richards. We are at the COSM 2022 conference.